Welcome to the New Zealand Meat Board's 2024 Annual Meeting. I'm Kate Ackland, Chair of New Zealand Meat Board. This meeting reports on the 2022 to 2023 financial year. This is the fourth year we've run a virtual New Zealand Meat Board Annual Meeting, opening the Meat Board up to all farmers by using technology. Please note that this meeting is being recorded, so if you have any connectivity issues, the recording will be available, available to be viewed later on our website. I can confirm we have a quorum of livestock farmers who have voted online and who have registered and are present for today's call. The New Zealand Meat Board is a statutory body governed by the Meat Board Act 2004. This legislation is administered by the Ministry for Primary Industries. The agenda for today is set as follows. We'll have a chairman's report followed by a chief executive's report. Then we'll have the opportunity to discuss a number of resolutions and the consultation on industry good funding. Our next slide, please. Yep. Uh, one apology has been received at the time of the meeting from uh, Peter Connolly, Director of New Zealand Meat Board. Uh, I can confirm that the minutes from the 2023 annual meeting held online on the 24th of March were accepted as a true and accurate record of that meeting by the board at its April 2023 meeting. Uh, these minutes were included in the New Zealand Meat Board notice of meeting referenced on the New Zealand Meat Board website. The meeting procedures include uh, one vote per livestock farmer and will be adopted for voting on all matters at this annual meeting. The board has determined under Section 58.3 of the Meat Board Act 2004 that the voting entitlement will be on the same as set out in the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Constitution, which is one farmer, one vote for ordinary resolutions. Voting has been conducted online and by postal voting and closed on the 13th of March. We'll advise of the results uh, next week and we'll have time to discuss each resolution at this meeting. The Meat Board's vision is New Zealand farmer and industry prosperity through safeguarding and realising the value of quota markets and reserves. The New Zealand Meat Board uh, has two functions, quota management, of the New Zealand Meat Board, uh, quota management and management of the New Zealand Meat Board farmer reserves. The value of quota administration in New Zealand calculates as $2.6 billion of red meat exports to the EU, UK and US markets. This means total tariff savings of $934 million per export year, made up of $609 million for EU and UK sheep and goat meat, $6.8 million for EU high quality beef, and $317 million for US beef and veal. New Zealand Meat Board also has responsibility for $79 million of farmer reserves, the origins of this fund trace back to the meat pool account and the meat industry stabilisation account and the marketing by government of meat produced in New Zealand, primarily for the United Kingdom in the late 1940s. In 1950, by arrangement between federated farmers and government and validated by legislation, the meat industry reserve account was set up to manage and administer these funds. The funds are 79 million, comprising 66 million of contingency fund, 3 million for quota market contingencies, and a remaining 10 million of general reserves net of the investment fluctuation reserve. The reserve policy facilitates uh, providing uh, funding to assist in the event of a major industry crisis to reopen export markets, uh, maintaining prudent levels of assets to avoid jeopardising quota markets and the integrity of quota management systems, and to provide funding for industry good activities. This year saw the completion of the implementation of the UK Free Trade Agreement. New Zealand Meat Board completed planning to establish the quota management system for administering the new UK FTA quotas, particularly beef, before entry into force on the 31st of May 2023. This was a substantial work stream and included development of an industry consultation on trans transitional quota allocation mechanisms, consultation on cost recovery for the UK FTA quota administration, development of the quota manual recording quota management system for the UK FTA beef, updating quota compliance and verification, re verification requirements, and additionally, the New Zealand Meat Board, with support from the New Zealand Government, successfully secured paperless quota certification. The strong interest in beef access under the new FTA beef quota, which gives positive signals in developing this market further. Between entry into force in May 2023 and the end of December 2023, more than 1,700 tonnes entered under the new quota with tariff savings of 9.9 million. Preparation for the EU FTA is well underway as well. The New Zealand EU government signed the Free Trade Agreement on the 9th of July 2023, resulting in improved opportunities for New Zealand red meat trade into the EU. 
The FTA requires ratification by the respective governments and its anticipated implementation requirements can be concluded for entry into force midway through this year. The most significant change and opportunity for the sector has been increased beef access. Beef access commences at 3,333 tonnes on entry into force and increases to 10,000 tonnes in year seven and subsequent years at a reduced 7.5% in quoted tariff. Sheep and goat meat access is available for two quotas covering both fresh, chilled and frozen quota access at 0% in quoted tariff. The fresh quota commences at 4,433 tonnes, increasing to 13,300 in year seven, while frozen quota begins at 8,233 tonnes, available on entry into force, and increases it to 24,700 tonnes by year seven. A similar preparedness programme undertaken for the UK FTA is being undertaken for the three new EU FTA quotas. The New Zealand Meat Board, with support from New Zealand Government, is advocating for paperless quota certification in the EU as well. New Zealand Meat Board, in partnership with Beef and Lamb and the Meat Industry Association, supported negotiations, and I'd personally like to acknowledge the MFAT and MPI staff and Ministers O'Connor and McClay uh, for their dedication and efforts in securing the new market access opportunities for New Zealand farmers and exporters. The Meat Board's administration role has expanded significantly in the last three and a half years. New Zealand Meat Board administered three WTO quotas before Brexit delivered two additional quotas which arose from the UK's exit from the EU. The UK FTA resulted in a further two quotas and when the EU FTA enters into force, this will add three more quotas, a total of 10 quotas to manage and administer. The additional quotas are all being implemented within existing systems, platforms and resources. The Act requires a review of the quota allocation mechanisms every five years. In reviewing the allocation systems, the overriding objective is maximising returns from the quota markets, but the review also considers allocation efficiency, risk, fairness and administrative burden. With new market opportunities under the FTA quotas, additional to the long-standing WTO access, the Board contracted an independent and comprehensive economic analysis of quota all allocation mechanisms to inform its current review. The Board released a consultation document on proposed allocation mechanisms on February, on February the 16th, and consultation on this is concluding today. Finally, New Zealand Meat Board is constantly examining other opportunities to improve efficiencies in the allocation and certification, while retaining integrity in its delivery of quota administration as a delegated responsibility on behalf of the Crown. This includes seeking expansion of paperless quota certification to other quota markets, including, hopefully, the new EU FTA quotas. Significant economic benefits for New Zealand Meat Board and exporters have been realised with the implementation of paperless quota certification in the US quota market. That concludes my report. I'll now hand over to Chief Executive uh, Sam McIver for his report, and then we'll take questions at the end of Sam's update. Thank you. Uh, Sam, you're on mute, I believe. Tenakoto Kata, it's good to speak to all of you today. My report provides a more operational review of the year. I'll cover off the financial results, quota management, reserves management and industry good funding, and I'll give an overview of some of our business improvement activities. The statement of intent on pages six and seven of the annual report summarises the key deliverables for the year. Of the 12 initiatives, 10 are green, two amber and one red. Both ambers are in hand and the red reflects the investment market volatility, which I'll cover off soon. Kate has given us deep insight on quota management, but just to remind you that the board's quota management systems must meet the requirements of the Act meet New Zealand's international market access obligations and comply with any rules and requirements applied by importing countries. And to meet these statutory objects, which is to facilitate the capture of the best returns of quota markets, the quota management system must be efficient and effective, take into account the longer term interests of New Zealand and the meat industry, and deliver credible, accurate and reliable allocation and certification systems and processes which meet our international obligations. 
And lastly, monitor and respond to trade, market and regulatory developments that can impact on New Zealand's success in those quota markets. Next slide, please. So a lot of the financials and reserves management uh, results of the year. As noted earlier, the board essentially runs two businesses, quota allocation and reserves management. From a financial perspective, the aim of the quota management business is essentially to break even over the medium term. The quota function is predominantly funded by quota, quota holders, and therefore New Zealand Meat Board only charges what is fair and reasonable to carry out its quota management function, including general administration costs for ongoing system changes and improvements. Given the amount of change for new quotas administered by the board and the related investments required short term, the board ran a deficit for the year which will be recovered from quota holders as soon as practical to return to a breaking position. Regarding quota reserves, the board runs a flexible level based on anticipated capital investments required. A longer term aim is for one year's two later, but given the amount of change in quotas administered and the ongoing uncertainty uh, regarding uh, ratification and implementation of particularly the EU FTA, the board has chosen to carry that cost uncertainty in the short term. Lastly, we hold a quota jeopardy reserve, which is a contingency for such things as legal challenges or other unforeseen circumstances that could threaten the effective administration of our quotas. Next slide, please. Want to cover off uh, farmer reserves. As Kate noted, the board essentially has three aims. Maintain a contingency fund, grow reserves ensuring inflation proofing, and generate funds for industry funding. To achieve this, the board has an investment strategy that is essentially 50% equities and 50% uh, fixed interest. As many of you will know, the last few years have been volatile. For the financial year in September 2023, a surplus of $1.7 million was reported from reserves management, which includes investment gains from revaluing the portfolio of $1.3 million and a net $400,000 of interest dividend income after reserve management expenses. The investment fund returned 4.7 4% after fees, taxes, and that compares to minus 4.1% in the 2022 year. After fees, tax, inflation, the actual return of the investment fund was minus 1.2%. In 2022, the real return was minus 11.3%, which well illustrates the volatility I mentioned. The medium term investment return target is 3.3% per annum after inflation, investment management costs, and tax. And the annual CPI movement uh, for the September 30th year was 7.2%. The New Zealand Meat Board uh, balance sheet is strong with total equity of 79 million. Can I have the next slide, please? One of the objectives of the Meat Board's reserves investment is the generation of funds to support industry good investments. Funding of 1.4 million from the New Zealand Meat Board Reserves investment interest and dividend income was granted to Beef and Lamb New Zealand Genetics for the Informing New Zealand Beef Program in the year ending September 2023. This program, partnering with MPI, uh, breeders and commercial farmers, draws upon uh, Beef and Land New Zealand's world-class sheep genetics program and applies these tools and disciplines to our beef industry. The objectives of this program include new national breeding objectives, standardised trait measurements, commercial herd genomics, genetic evaluation and data management, and industry uptake. We expect this program to deliver an extra $460 million in industry profit over the next 25 years. Realistic, we believe, given what's been achieved in our sheep industry. For the 2023-24 year, the board has proposed funding two programs which farmers have been consulted on. Ongoing investment is proposed in the New Zealand uh, INZB program of up to $1 million, which is being milestones. New investment is uh, proposed on a program of eradicating facial eczema of up to 700k. 
The split of this funding complements Beef and Land New Zealand's and MPI's investment in these programs and also ensures a more balanced long-term investment program from the New Zealand Meat Board to support both sheep and beef industry projects. Next slide, please. The New Zealand Meat Board's uh, quota management system is a key cog in New Zealand's export of success. It not only is daily effectiveness and efficiency crucial, but a commitment to continuous improvement underpins all our operations. So what are the improvements we're making? As quota utilisation and certification volume changes, we're constantly look at, looking at ensuring the number of people we have and where we operate is fit for purpose. Farmer communication and engagement continues to be a major focus. This is noted as an amber in our statement of intent. In particular, this is to ensure clear differentiation from Beef and Land New Zealand's role and to ensure farmers have better knowledge of the New Zealand Meat Board activities. We've already noted the quota allocation uh, review and efficiency is a key consideration here. Kate also noted the cost recovery review. A review has been scoped to identify how the New Zealand Meat Board can minimise cost with an expansion to 10 quotas, noting an increase from three quotas just three years ago. Lastly, we're currently undergoing the government's statutory audit of our quota management systems. Though previous audits have pointed to New Zealand beef staff doing a uh, New Zealand Meat Board staff, sorry, doing a stellar job, there are always small improvements identified. So the government's independent role is appreciated. In closing, the New Zealand Meat Board has once again provided world-class service to our industry and performed a competent custodian role for industry reserves. Our commitment as always is to get better at both of these responsibilities. My thanks to the dedicated staff, the government officials, our quota users that make this all possible. Namihi, thank you for listening. This concludes my report. I'll hand it back to Kate now and we will take questions. Thanks, Sam. Do we have any questions through on either of uh, the reports that have been presented so far? Yes, hi, Kate. It's uh, Nick here. There's a couple of questions that have come through. And just a reminder to everyone that um, you know, there are opportunities to ask questions. So please just um, drop them in the chat if if you would like to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The, the first question uh, is to Sam. It says, the, you mentioned finances being break even in the medium term, but with operating deficit and with rising costs globally, what is the New Zealand Meat Board doing to address operating costs for the farmer? Um, just, just a reminder that for quota management, um, those quota management costs are actually paid by uh, certificate holders or those that undertake uh, the quota management. So, so there are there are no costs uh, to the New Zealand uh, farmer there. But essentially, uh, if, if we talk about that quota management, um, we're looking at the footprint in terms of uh, where our people are and, and the related costs of that. Uh, obviously, technology is a, is a key part of that. So looking at the, the uh, technology improvements that we can make that uh, take cost out of the operation. Uh, managing risk is another uh, key focus. So you'll understand uh, most people that are involved with technology these days that cyber risk is a real risk, uh, business interruption risk. So there's investment uh, going in there. And uh, Kate mentioned as well is the use of electronic uh, certification, uh, which takes out paper handling and, and cost. Um, and certainly we know there's been significant savings uh, from that in the, uh, in the US market, in the US quota. And we're looking to duplicate those savings in the UK uh, market and in the EU as well. And we've certainly uh, got uh, really positive feedback from quota holders uh, around that uh, as well. Thank you, Sam. There is a, another question here for, for you. Why are reserves policy not funding things like MBOVIS abdication? instead of continually placing more levies on farmers, i.e. remove levy burden from farmers? Yep, yeah, that is, that is, a, that is a really good question. Uh, in terms of 
setting uh, the reserves policy, there is a very clear uh, criteria there around the use of um, those reserves. And, and that is in particular that that contingency fund is only available uh, for relaunching uh, New Zealand in international markets should we have a crisis. And, and I guess the most uh, notable one that comes to mind is uh, a foot and mouth uh, event in New Zealand. And, and we know that uh, as an industry that exports about 90% of what we produce, uh, relaunching and getting access into those international markets is absolutely cr critical. So the board uh, does review that policy from time uh, to time. And, and the board's uh, policy setting at this point in time is that um, that is only to be used uh, for those purposes. So that policy is very, very uh, clear. Thanks, Sam. That's all for questions at this stage. Can we now move on to the company um, resolution? Great, thanks for that, Nick. Uh, so we have a couple of resolutions for discussion. Um, the one on screen uh, proposes that the directive fees pool for farmers and industry directors be increased by $8,000 or 5.4%. 5 now, in shaping this recommendation, we re-established an independent remuneration committee, uh, which comprised of Murray Donald as chair, Sarah von Wittelsen and Tony Egan as members. Uh, the committee completed a review and benchmarking as set out in the meeting explanatory notes and have made this recommendation for farmers to vote on. Uh, just to note that the director's fees are funded from reserves management income and quota management fee income. So this resolution will be open for any discussion after we've also uh, had the auditor resolution following this. So next slide, thank you. Uh, so reso resolution two is to appoint the auditor for the 2024 financial year. Uh, the proposal is that KPMG be appointed as the New Zealand Meat Board Auditor for the year ending 30th of September 2024. The board conducted a tender process in 2021 and after uh, considering uh, competing proposals, agreed that KPMG continues to be the most competitive audit service offering. Consideration was given to the merits of a new provider. However, this was offset by the deeper knowledge of the incumbent with the rotation of both partner and manager occurring, providing a fresh set of eyes. The KPMG partner responsible for the annual audit has recently changed out due to rotational requirements supported by the external reporting board, having a maximum prescribed rotation period for a large not-for-profit public benefit entity of seven years. So look, farmers have the ultimate say by accepting or rejecting uh, these proposals and look, both resolutions are open for discussion now. I'm just checking for any new questions um, and at this stage there are no questions on the director's remuneration or the appointment of the auditor resolution, Kate. Great, thanks for that, Nick. Uh, we will move on to uh, the consultation on industry good funding. So we're also seeking feedback on the proposal to fund up to 1.7 million for the 2023-24 year from interest and dividend income for industry good funding. So that's up to 700,000 for the Informing New Zealand Beef Programme that partners uh, with Beef and Land and the Ministry for Primary Industries Sustainable Food and Fibre Futures Fund, and up to $1 million for the Eliminating the Impact of Facial Eczema project. Now, further details for these programmes are included in the annual meeting material, and both are expected to deliver a sub substantial returns back to the sector. Facial eczema alone is calculated to cost our sector $332 million per year. I will analyse the consultation feedback that we've received and the board will consider all of the points raised by submitters. So the opportunity for discussion on these programmes is uh, available after the next consultation topic. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the board's also consulting on proposed amendments to the reserves policy. 
So firstly, the maximum reserves. The board's proposing that a target for the maximum level of reserves is set at $100 million in 2022 equivalent dollars. Uh, after this level is reached, investment returns are better applied to industry good initiatives, reducing the financial burden on levy payers at that time, rather than continually building reserves. Uh, we have a proposal around multi-year project funding, so that is a change to clarify that multi-year projects funded by New Zealand Leap Board, once approved, do not require ongoing consultation and will only be subject to annual milestone reviews with updated progress reports annually. If milestones are not being met, then New Zealand Leap Board funding may not continue. And lastly, we're looking at the capital drawdown proposal. So that will allow uh, industry good funding to be available from accumulated gains on the investment portfolio and would allow for funding in excess of the interest and dividend income received and after the reserves have been infl inflation adjusted. So both of the consultation uh, points will now be open for discussion if there's any questions. Yes, hi, there is a, a question that has come through on the Informing New Zealand Beef Programme. Um, Sam, you're probably best placed to answer this. Uh, the question is, INZB, is it tackling the low-hanging fruit or chasing things that are not yet the drivers of profitability? National carving at 83% isn't even being addressed. It's worth discussion. Yeah, um, thank you for that question. That's uh, That is a point. Uh, well made, and, and I guess one of the points I did make earlier in the presentation is is just what the sheep industry has achieved versus genetic progress uh, in the beef industry. So, so firstly, uh, one of the things that the INZB program is very focused on is um, is that reproductive performance, and of course, um, hybrid vigor is a, is an obvious way to uh, to get that, and so. The use of hybrid vigour in New Zealand and, and how we uh, make the most of that is certainly a focus. I think the second point to make is that about 20% of the investment is uh, focused on extension. So there are new tools, uh, new opportunities, and as you note, uh, future uh, technology has been looked at, but a very strong focus on extension because we know that there's a lot of genetic information and a lot of genetic material sitting in our beef industry now that is not uh, being utilised. So, so thus, about 20% of the budget is focused on uptake of what we know is existing knowledge and how we apply uh, that better and how we demonstrate uh, the results to whether it's the dairy industry and dairy farmers using beef genetics or, or beef farmers uh, using their own genetics on how they can maximise uh, profit. So certainly, um, thanks for bringing up the point and, and totally agree with you there. There is low-hanging fruit and we're focused on it. Cool. Thanks for that, Sam. That is the, the final question. Um, so I will hand back to you, Kate. Great. Thanks, Nick. Look, as we uh, come towards the end of the meeting, I just have a couple of acknowledgements to make. Uh, firstly, Martin Coop uh, is retiring after this meeting, after six years of dedicated service to New Zealand Meat Board. Thank you very much, Martin, for your time. Obviously, we will uh, your service will be celebrated at a later date, but your contribution will be missed. Uh, secondly, Sarah Patterson has been appointed for a further three, uh, three years. Uh, Sarah is a government appointee who brings a wealth of trade knowledge and experience to the board. Uh, I'd like to offer uh, thanks to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade and the Ministry for Primary Industries uh, for the, the support you provide to quota administration matters and to conclude the UK FTA implementation process and the EU FTA preparedness process that's underway. And finally, thanks to the New Zealand Meat Board, Wellington, Brussels and London staff for continuing to provide the support to New Zealand's quota export trade and the value that ultimately delivers to us as farmers. The next New Zealand Meat Board annual meeting is proposed to be held prior to March 2025. As I said previously, a recording of this meeting will be available on the New Zealand Meat Board website soon. Thank you all for your attendance and I declare the 2024 New Zealand Meat Board annual meeting closed. <laughs>